Welcome guys, this is Mauricio from CloudWords, and you're watching video number two of our series, Dropbox versus Google Drive versus OneDrive versus iCloud or Amazon Cloud Drive. I know this is really massive, and that's why we've broken it down into individual sections that you can access right here in a convenient playlist, or if you like, you can also read our in-depth article with all our findings here on this side as well. This video is about Google Drive. I hope you enjoy it, and remember to subscribe to get more awesome content like this one. Of course, we cannot cover each and every little feature and angle. That's why we've broken it down into these subsections. Well, first of all, plans and pricing. How much does a service cost? File syncing and sharing, and also collaboration and mobile access and photo storage. We are also looking at speed because that's what I know many of you guys are really interested in. Which service is the fastest? Okay, let's look at what you get for your buck first. Google Drive gives 15 gigabytes of free storage. However, your Gmail account counts basically towards that free storage. If you have 10 gigabytes of emails, you'll end up getting only five gigabytes of free storage. Pay tiers start from as little as $1.99 for 100 gigabytes. The highest storage it can give is 30 terabytes for $300 per month. This is actually the highest storage capacity offered among all the cloud storage services included in our list today. Well, apart from Amazon Cloud Drive, which is claiming to give unlimited storage, but has other hoops uh, that we're gonna talk about later. Now. We look at file syncing and speed. The one thing that I absolutely love about Google Drive's web app, for example, is that the right click works just like it works on your, on your desktop. I really wish Dropbox had this too. You can share files very easily and it's also extremely easy to directly upload folders to share them with other people and collaborate inside the folders. When I use Dropbox, I cannot directly upload folders through the web app, unfortunately. I really think Google could do better with the web app interface overall. Compared to others, this one looks a little dull and boring, but I mean, it gets the point across. It has a great background and the graphics look a little sad too. Google is not very designy overall. As with syncing, it works in the usual Dropbox-like fashion. You install the app and it would automatically sync everything to your devices. Selective sync is possible only for main folders. You cannot selectively sync subfolders, which for me is a deal breaker. File syncing is good, but it's not Dropbox good. I always feel there are more hoops with larger files. Also for some people, it may be important to note that you cannot transfer ownership of files inside Google Drive. So you would have to download and re-upload them again, which takes a lot of time and is very, very frustrating. If you wanna have more user feedback on Dropbox versus Google Drive, you can read our article here where there are a lot of comments of users uh, for both of these solutions. Now this series, we've tested each cloud service with a one gigabyte test folder and a different set of files, each ranging from a couple of kilobytes only to over 200 megabytes for some MP3 and before video files. And we try to simulate a typical syncing scenario. So we've included spreadsheets, we've included uh, presentations and other documents as well. So here's a snapshot of our current internet speed measured with speedtest.net. Now, Let's look at the results for Google Drive. As you can see, it took us only 24 minutes to upload those files to the Google Cloud via the app and with a peak speed of 1.04 megabyte per second that averaged out, out to 0.69 megabytes per second. It's not too shabby. Now, when downloading from the web, you need to calculate some time for Google to zip your files, to compress your files, which took two minutes. Downloading one gig, took a little longer, two minutes and 84 seconds to be precise. Download speed peaked at 8.95 megabytes per second and syncing via the app was a weird experience because I almost wanted to give Google Drive the win here because it seemed it only took 1.58 seconds to sync everything. But then I discovered it stopped in the middle of the syncing process and later resumed to sync the remaining files. This break obviously results in a longer syncing time of almost six minutes for one gigabyte. Next is sharing and collaboration. 
And that's where Google Drive really shines in my opinion. Collaboration and sharing is pretty easy with Google Drive, all thanks to the amazing Google Docs. In fact, Google Docs has the best real-time collaboration feature available in the market right now. In my opinion, I use it all the time with my staff, with my freelancers to share ideas or share spreadsheets. You can view and edit files with team members in real time and discuss about it over chat. When collaborating on Google Doc, users are able to see the Google Plus profile pictures of all the users who are viewing or editing the document with you. For Google Chrome OS users, offline access to all your drive files is also provided, which is neat in some cases. File sharing is pretty similar to Dropbox. You can either directly create a shared folder by inviting users and putting their email address or share the link of the folder or file with other people. But of course, they need a Google account. Don't expect sophisticated file access permissions, though, for each individual files you share. Now, mobile access and photo storage. I mean, we're carrying around our mobile phones around us wherever we go, we take photos. So of course, our cloud storage system needs to be always available for us. While I still try to avoid editing spreadsheets or other larger documents on my mobile, sometimes it's useful to have that feature and Google's Android app works flawlessly with Google Drive and comes built in with most, if not all Android devices. If you want to edit documents, you need to install separate apps to edit those documents though. Now, Google Photos comes in handy if you are a manic collector of memories as I am, for example. It will store an unlimited amount of photos with a few gotchas. If you want to make use of the unlimited feature, you need to feel comfortable to have your photos compressed to 60 megapixels Full res photos obviously count towards your quota. Once you upload photos on Google, it scans through the images and can identify the different objects or faces in the photo. So a search for pizza will make Google show all of your photos that have a pizza in it supposedly. To be honest, I'm not really comfortable with going with Google going through all of my private photos. It's an algorithm after all, but anyway, that's the same reason I'm a little doubtful about Google Drive as well, because well, it's Google and they already know a lot about me, about my business. Do I really want to share my private and personal life with them? But it's really up to you to decide if you want to make use of that photo feature as well. In a nutshell, if you're into online collaboration, for example, you're working with a virtual team, Google Docs is indispensable. If, however, syncing is your main priority over a couple of devices in your office or in, in your home, I recommend you watch my other videos. There are much better solutions out there and I really hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to watch the other videos in the series here so that you know which cloud storage and syncing service is the best for your needs. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.